ado, I'd like to introduce Ms. Ms. Talima Aaron. opportunity to talk about John Jones. When I got the call, I was asked to talk about his contributions, most specifically his role in the Underground Railroad and his job burying the Confederate dead at Woodlawn Cemetery. So I'm going to start with a little bit of the background. John W. Jones was born into slavery in Leesburg, Virginia on June 22, 1817. He escaped the South, settled in Elmira in 1844, where he remained until his death. John's mother was born in slavery, and his father was sold before his birth. Since slaves were treated as property, no consideration was given to slave families, and it was common for owners to sell family members at well. John was owned by Miss Sally Elsey, whose family was very wealthy, and as mistress of the estate, she made sure that John Jones and other slaves were never subjected to the horrific treatment that most Southern slaves endured. John worked around the house until age 12, when he was sent to work in the fields with the other men. Now John heard about the North from his grandmother, heard it was a place where men like him were free, and he hoped to go there someday. So when Sally's health began to fail, it was clear that she was going to die soon. And the heirs were not as pleasant and John did not want to work for them. So he planned his escape. He told his mother of his plans to leave and she consented. Finally, one Saturday night, he asked his mother to get his best clothes ready because he was going to a party. John said goodbye and that was the last time he saw her. On that Saturday in June of 1844, John, his two half-brothers, and two slaves from a nearby plantation fled into the night. Now, a lot happened on this journey, so I'm kind of fast-forwarding to um, a significant stop along, um, along his uh, travels. Weary from travel, they eventually reached South Creek in Bradford County, Pennsylvania, which is south of Elmira where they sought shelter in the haystack of a barn on the farm of Dr. Nathaniel Smith. Mrs. Smith discovered them, and she invited them to stay. She fed them morning and night for almost a week until they were healthy and able to travel again. John and the group arrived in Elmira in July 1844. So that's a month. They started in June, they arrived in July. John had $1.46 in his pocket. He earned another 50 cents that very day, splitting wood. John was industrious and worked at many odd jobs, but he was uneducated, which was also not uncommon, as it was illegal to teach slaves or for slaves to know how to read or write in many states. <laughs> and even in Elmira, no one would admit him to one of the two schools. Enter Judge Ariel Thurston, who noticed John's ability and used his influence to get him accepted into one of the schools. So in one winter, John received all the formal education he was to have. Now there were only two cemeteries in existence at that time in Elmira, and Mr. Jones became caretaker of both of them. With his pay, he purchased a small yellow house next to the First Baptist Church. He was also the sexton of the First Baptist Church. It was in this house that John cared for over 800 fugitive slaves during the nine years he worked as an agent, station master of the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad was a secret network of state places where slaves could stop, rest, and receive aid, shelter, as they headed north for freedom. John Jones and his Yellow House became famous as the only underground agency, underground railroad agency between Philadelphia and St. Catharines in Ontario, Canada. The escaped slaves usually came in groups of six or seven, but so rapidly that on one night, over 30 men, women, and children were in the little house at the same time. Now, I don't know about you, if I get more than five visitors at once, I'm overwhelmed, <laughs> but... John Jones persevered. The slaves were often penniless when they arrived, and I suspect tired, hungry, frightened, and sometimes sick. 
Mr. Jones would call on several sympathizers in the area, including Reverend Thomas K. Beecher, Jervis Langdon, James M. Robinson, William Yates, and Riggs Watros, who were always ready to lend their hand at the cause and give money. When Woodlawn Cemetery was established in 1859, John Jones was named as its sexton, and in this role, he supervised the burial of 2,973 Confederate soldiers who died in the Elmira prison camp. Mr. Jones hired up to 12 men to dig the graves, which totaled in one month numbers as high as 495. And he was always present to ensure the burial was properly and reverently conducted. Stories abound about Jones's kindness and gentleness as he did his work. He performed his duties with great care and dignity, and it was through his efforts that a permanent record of all that were buried here was preserved. So every kindness John done John Jones, he kind of paid it forward in tenfold. The name, rank, company, regiment, grave number, and date of death were attached to the lid of every coffin. Also, the date was written on a piece of paper, inserted in a bottle, and deposited with the remains. His meticulous record keeping led Woodlawn Cemetery to become designated as a national cemetery. These acts speak volumes about the character of John W. Jones, a man who overcame his adverse circumstances of his birth by escaping slavery, who then opened his heart <coughs> to others like him and helped them find freedom. He's a man who obtained his education as an adult and did with great care and dignity give final ministrations to men who were fighting a war where slavery was the principal issue. With the money he saved, Mr. Jones bought a comfortable farm on Upper College Avenue in which he retired and lived out his life. So in closing, I'd just like to say that African American history is a part of American history. It's very important that we understand the past as we build our future. We share the responsibility to preserve the memory of those who came before us. So I'd like to thank you for letting me share some of this incredible stories. You will have to come to the museum to hear a lot of the other stories that are probably a little more entertaining. Um, on behalf of the John W. Jones Museum Board of Trustees and its founder and president, Lucy Brown, I also want to thank the individuals in the community and local businesses who have given to our museum um, over the years. We are restoring his original farmhouse, the last one on College Ave. Um, as a museum and visitor center, your continued support is needed. And please look to us to um, come and enjoy and learn a little bit about your history. We expect to open the doors shortly. So the last thing I want to do is just read an excerpt from the paper. And I actually have a page from the Star Gazette. Saturday, October the 21st, 1950, and it's called Honor for John Jones, Housing Project to Bear Name of Ex-Slave, Who Aided Fugitives and Very Confederate Dead. So those of you who live in Elmira, you may be familiar with Jones Court. Please know that it was named after John W. Jones. And the last few paragraphs say, the bells of Christmas had just ceased their ringings when John passed on December 6, 1900. His death brought a solution to a touching mystery. Each week, a bouquet had appeared on the grave of Mrs. Smith, who had befriended a group of slaves in 1844. None knew whence they came. They stopped with John's heart. Not until then did it become certain whose hand arranged them with such loving regularity. Thank you. And please think about seeing us. Now, we have some important dates, and I'm going to just stick in a few plugs. June 14th is uh, Juneteenth, and we celebrate that at the Ernie Davis Center. We are planning a soft opening for the museum very shortly. More about that. And October the 26th, there will be a play at the Clemens Center about the Underground Railroad called Susquehanna to Freedom. And it's going to actually follow some of the stories of the Underground Railroad, 
And John Jones is a main central character who's going to be the narrator of the story. So um, please come out and support. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aaron. Very, a very great man from Elmira.